Hi, welcome to Campfire Chats with Honorable Outfitters. Today, I'm going solo as we discuss why you should not go camping in the winter if you are new. Now, this uh, might be a little clickbaity uh, if you think about it, but overall, like if you are not prepared with skills, equipment, and honestly, just desire and confidence, then uh, going camping in the winter can actually be extremely dangerous. Now, camping has its natural uh, concerns, no matter when, right? So if you're in the summer, you got heat exhaustion. If you're in the spring, you could get really, really wet, and then you get hypothermia. In the fall, similar circumstances, you have no idea what the weather's going to be like. So winter, especially though, can be uh, very impactful to your camping experience if there are some things that you just hadn't considered. So uh, we're going to discuss this and break it down into five main topics. So listen up for five main topics. Now, when I had my very first camping experience in the winter, I had already been camping for a long time. You know, I was in Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts and everything. And our first troop winter camp out well, we had snow. We and that's kind of surprising here in Ohio these days because the the weather's completely shifted. But back in the '90s, we had snow, and it was a pretty common thing to have snow in the winter. And uh, uh, you know, as a scout, as a kid coming from a, a family background that was not the most affluent, we had to uh, accommodate certain things just like the the old timers did back in the early 1900s they didn't have the most premium and premier camping equipment so i I learned how to adapt and you have to learn the skills to make sure that you have a safe experience especially especially if you don't have the right equipment to make up for what you may lack now if you've got all the money in the world there's lots of things you can do to make camping in the winter very enjoyable and almost like you're just camping at home in a cabin or something like that. But if you're like the the rest of us, uh, maybe someone who wants just a little bit of adventure, then camping in the winter, you need to take some precautions. So first thing first is you, you really need to understand the challenges of why winter camping can be life threatening. You need to prepare. You need to have a basic understanding of uh, first aid. You need to have a basic understanding of how to read and understand your body in case something happens. Uh, You know, with the cold temperatures, and especially the fluctuating temperatures in the evening and the day, it might be 40, 30 degrees. And then at night, it could be in the the low doubles or maybe even single digits as the sun goes down. We don't necessarily realize it always that the sun provides a tremendous amount of heat and energy to us. Not only does it provide us the vitamin D that we need to survive, but the sun's rays actually radiates heat towards us. And if you are camping during the snow time, that sun can actually reflect off the snow and do some crazy things with your eyesight, but it also just kind of makes you feel warmer than what it really is. And you have limited daylight, so you can't just go out in the woods and uh, spend all your time out there and thinking that, uh, you know, it's going to be like seven o'clock before you have to turn in. No, with uh, winter hours, uh, you have shorter days, so you can't spend as much time out and about without taking into consideration, hey, I need to make sure to bed down and get everything ready before I go to sleep. So you might have to go out and collect fuel sources to have your fire, make sure you're heated. You may have to uh, turn in a little bit earlier uh, to prepare your food, depending on what you're making and things like that. So having the appropriate amount of daylight, again, going with temperature, but also just uh, safety, uh, navigational wise and things like that, you, you need to take these things in consideration. Having the proper gear, whether you're a, a heritage camper like myself or more of a contemporary camper, or having the right gear can make or break an experience. And if you are a fairly new camper, you may want to get you know as best that you can afford. Stay away from the heritage gear for a little while and uh, maybe trickle in heritage gear with uh, your more modern stuff because heritage gear is really good. I love it. Like when it comes down to wool, I prefer wool hands down over other gear. But with heritage gear, you have weight. With modern gear, it's more about being lightweight, but still get the same properties. Now, uh, wool is still the best material out there for outdoor 
wear, especially when it comes to, to weather conditions. But, you know, modern gear itself, you know, with as long as you take care of it and you wear it in the appropriate way and you have your layers and things, is a lot lighter. And if you are a fairly new, inexperienced camper, then having lighter gear and learning how to use uh, basic skills and things like that definitely has its place over uh, going back to grandpa's time. You can do it, but I would strongly suggest that you go with more contemporary gear starting now because these kind of experiences can either make or break your time in the woods. And ultimately, like I, my goal is to get as many people out in the woods for as long as they possibly can, no matter how old you are. And if you're, you know, even in your 20s, maybe you're in your 50s and you're, you're going back out in the woods and stuff. And if you have a bad experience, then you're not going to go out in the woods again. Or maybe it might thwart how much you end up going outdoors. And I, I don't want that. So uh, I strongly suggest if you are trying to ease and transition yourself into the outdoor environment, then go ahead and go with the contemporary gear. Practice your skills. Get comfortable with uh the weather conditions and what it's like to to sleep underneath the stars or in a tent under weather uh, winter weather conditions before you decide to to go all in on the heritage side of things. But having the proper gear in preparation for staying warm and dry in the winter is paramount. But you also need to understand, you know, just because you got all this gear doesn't mean that you have to use it all at once. Uh, there's a lot of things that go into your body heat and regulating your body heat because if you sweat that is uber dangerous it's so dangerous to uh, your winter experience because if you sweat then you're going to get cold and you could be hypothermic and bad things could happen so again having more modern gear that uh, you can transition in and out of may be better than a heritage gear that might be a little bit heavier and uh, might be more expensive depending on what it is you're using. Now, the point number two is you need to build skills through three season camping. Three seasons, that would be your fall, your summer, and your spring. I might have said that backwards, but most people tend to prefer to go camping either in the summer or in the fall first because the spring is very unreliable with weather, at least on the eastern part, northeastern part of the United States. And I'm, I'm coming from that kind of background and experience being here in Ohio. But building up your skills in fall and summer are definitely going to benefit you uh, before transitioning into the winter. The summer and fall camping experiences can provide a, uh, a, a true foundation for challenging winter conditions because it rains even in the fall, even in the summer. In the fall, it gets a little bit cooler in the evening. So then you can kind of test and pre-test your gear and more of a safer conditions and with the the wet weather just like if it's snowing you know you know how to adapt to those kind of conditions you might uh, find that your pack needs to be uh, winter what rise a particular way whether it be uh, dry sacks whether it be uh, weatherproofing whether it be uh, maybe wax canvas or something like that so uh, trying it out in those conditions where it's not so detrimental to your safety and health and to your experience is a lot better. Now, when you uh, set up your tent in the fall and in the summer, it's going to be a little bit different than when you do it in the winter, especially if it is snow, because uh, snow can be pretty deep. So instead of using just traditional stakes like you would in the fall or the summer, you may actually have to uh, you have a modified uh, tent staking alternative experience, such as making the crosses out of sticks and then packing the snow on top of it as anchors. They're called snow anchors versus just sticking it into the ground. And the ground tends to be kind of frozen in the winter, and that can be a challenge in and of itself. So being able to know how to adjust your tent, make sure to know how to uh, identify the prevailing winds, identify knowing what direction the sun comes up and the sun goes down to make sure that you get radiant heat into your tent, into your, your camping sp space. All these different things kind of factor in. You can get that practice by using your gear and equipment in the fall and the summer. Now, the cost of equipment in the fall and summer tends to be less because you know, ultimately we don't like to talk about it, but everything costs money, right? Nothing's really free. 
So if you are going to try to camp out in the winter, uh, especially like a real proper four season tent or a sleeping pad or something like that, you can get away with going with natural materials and things. And people do that all the time. But for your first experience, that's what we're kind of focusing on here. We're not talking about your 18th experience. We're talking about your first experience, making sure that you have uh, the right equipment to sleep comfortably uh, and to be safe, to, to hoard off the wind, hold off any inclement weather and everything like that, that, that costs money. Now, if you want to go Nesmic style and have a lean-to and have a brush bow bed, things like that, well, sure, certainly do that. I think there's a place to do that kind of thing in your backyard, first of all, before you actually go out and do that in like a state park or in a national park or some other uh, environment where you're maybe just too far away from civilization to go inside and warm up or go use the bathroom or something like that. So uh, again, I suggest that you take your time with it and you transition into these things gradually. And in some places you can rent or borrow gear from people. That's um, So we have this great community, the Camp Crafters Guild, the traditional Camp Crafters Guild, which you've never heard of it. If you haven't experienced it and looked it up and checked it out, I, I invite you to do it because there's a great group of people on there. Everybody's pretty well experienced. We've got a couple new people on there. But overall, we have a tremendous amount of wisdom on there. And, and the kind of group of people that we have on there, uh, just because they are tends to be more traditional campers, that they build up gear over a period of time. And there's a huge networking aspect of it. And if you don't have anybody in your friend group or family group to go camping with, then networking with people in your area to go camping together, especially if you're trying to learn new skills and uh, uh, get that kind of experience. But maybe you don't want to be you know, considered the, the tenderfoot, so to speak. You don't want to be made fun of. Well, finding a group like what we have in the traditional Camp Crafters Guild would be a great opportunity for you because already people are trying to uh, connect and go camping and things like that. And there's people out there who are uh, tr definitely willing to pass on their knowledge and experience to help you out with uh, whatever your, your camping needs are. So uh, uh, borrowing gear in that kind of environment, once you get to know people and you, you get to have meetups and stuff is certainly possible. So then you get to try things before you actually make the investment into certain things. I'm a civil war reenactor. And when I first started, I had to borrow gear because, you know, gear is expensive. And because I was able to kind of borrow different pieces from different people and, and just talk to them and get their experiences, I was actually able to make a better, more informed decision for myself. So when I invested my own money into it, I was uh, pretty well prepared and I knew it, what I was getting in. Point number four, and we've already kind of touched on this a little bit, is the safety considerations in winter environments. There's inherent risk with camping, like I already said, but with winter, you have hypothermia, you have frostbite, you have possible avalanches or icicles that you have to worry about. You have dead trees that you may not be able to easily identify. So their branches uh, where you can't set up camp could possibly fall down. You got the widow makers. That, and uh, because the trees don't have the leaves, there could be a lot more wind in the area. Uh, these are things that you really need to consider. Um, even going back to water. So if you were going into a traditional backpacking environment where they may not have um, you know, water pumps or water stations for you to get water, water is necessary. And it takes a tremendous amount of snow to actually melt down to a suitable amount of water that you can drink. So finding yourself a, a good stream or body of water that you can pull from and sanitize either with a filter, with boiling it, or using the little water tablets or something like that, it's pretty useful depending on when you go in the winter. You may have a difficult time finding water. Uh, so these are things, again, with the safety considerations that you need to, to keep in mind. And going with experienced people or at least kind of scouting out an area previous during the nice weather, talking to other campers and people within your network and your group, that can be really useful to make sure that you have the safest opportunity possible. And you need to understand weather forecasts and terrain conditions and emergency protocols. You know, you, whenever you go somewhere, especially alone, you know, a lot of people like to go camping alone or backpacking alone. 
you should probably have some type of plan in place. You need to let somebody know like, hey, I'm going to this place, plan on arriving at this time, and I plan on being back home at this time. So if you are not back home in a reasonable amount of time, then there could be a search party that gets put out there. And you want to make sure to stay on whatever trail or direction that you're wanting to go on. And uh, uh, that's kind of a a thing that people tend to forget about, or they just brush it off as unnecessary. But in winter conditions especially, it's paramountly important that you take these extra steps for your safety and the safety of any members that you might be going with. Because maybe you're not the one who gets hurt. Maybe it's someone else who gets hurt that you're going with. And now you are responsible for getting that person out. And you setting the steps ahead of time is going to go pretty far to make sure that you get back alive, have a good time, and everybody's safe. Point number five is mental preparedness and mindset. If you've never camped out and slept in like low, low double digits or single digits or below that, if you have never had that opportunity, that uh, is very, very different than just snuggling up in like a 40 degree or 50 degree weather. You know, 20 degrees, 15 degrees, negative degrees, especially when the wind's blowing. Man, that, that could make or break your sleeping time if you are not prepared. If you, um, I don't know, if you just don't have the tolerance for the cold. Because even if you're hiking, if it's in the, the low double digits or single digits, you can get frostbite. You can get uh, wind burn on your face. You can get chapped skin. And I'm not trying to scare you away from doing this. But you, you have to prepare yourself mentally like this is not going to be the same as hiking or camping in the fall, the summer, or the spring. And it's a completely awesome adventure. It's a great opportunity. I think everybody should do it. But you just need to prepare yourself so you, uh, again, walk away with a good time and walk into it with a complete understanding of what you're kind of getting into. And you got to have a positive mindset and you got to be able to to motivate yourself through the challenging times if you're struggling getting a fire started especially when you're really cold and you can't feel the tips of your fingers or something that can be frustrating it can also be really scary right legitimately it can be kind of scary so being able to have the mental preparedness okay if this doesn't work then i know i can do this if this doesn't work i know i can do this and if this doesn't work well then i should probably get myself out of this situation right so you need to have that plan in place. You also need to have that mental mindset of this is what I'm getting myself into. I'm going to try to push through these challenges. But at some point, I need to be aware of what my breaking point is, where my skill gap is. So I don't put myself or others in a dangerous situation. And uh, with the winter, things change constantly. It's, uh, it's really interesting to do a winter hike or winter camp out and you weren't expecting snow and out of the blue comes snow. And that's kind of an interesting experience um, in itself because maybe you're losing sight of where things are. Maybe your, your path is starting to get covered and things are getting a little bit more tricky of trying to navigate it. And those are, those are great, awesome experiences that I urge you to try to tackle. But again, Make sure that you have the skills and the experience to, to back up whatever you're doing so you get out of there safe. If you notice, this is like a trend, right? I just keep repeating some of these same things over and over again because we want you to get out and come back to your families and friends and talk about your awesome adventure and just ultimately be willing to go back into the woods and have another similar experience or maybe even take people into a similar experience now that you had the experience and share the love of outdoor adventure. Now, point number six, gradual progression and continued learning. This is your bonus right here because I said five. So six is kind of like a bonus. But y- you need to encourage the your, your own approach for winter camping as a, a progression, okay? You, you're not going to want to go out there and camp and hike, you know, 15 miles all at once. Maybe just do a very short loop trail and the next time you're going to do a, a larger trail, maybe like a 10 mile or something like that. And starting with day trips, making sure to, you know, I'm going to go out and I'm going to come back the same day. 
And you do that a couple of times, get yourself acclimated to different terrains and different experiences. You got to put yourself out there purposely when it's snowing. You could put yourself out there when it's not sm- snowing. Maybe it's just muddy landscape, things like that. And possibly even overnight stays. So like you go out on Friday, you stay overnight and you come back on Saturday or on Sunday or whenever you're able to go. And you need to understand the value of continued learning. You need to find others that you can pick up tips and tricks. This kind of goes back to the mentoring of like the traditional campcrafters guild. There's it's a great community. We've got people on there who are eager to share their experiences. And many of them are older and they have had military experience. They've had their own personal backpacking, professional backpacking or camping experiences. Like it's a just a great place finding a group of people that have learned a lot of things from you. That way you don't have to make the mistakes, especially dangerous mistakes, but you can uh, benefit from their wisdom. You got to be constantly learning and find yourself some books. Read the old camp craft writers. Read the more modern ones. You know, Dave Canterbury, for example, he's got a lot of great books out there. Uh, mostly it tends to be for like bushcrafting and, uh, you know, maybe making things and stuff but even those like especially if you're in a survival situation uh, those are important skills that way it builds your confidence hey if i'm in this situation i know how to do this i know how to identify what trees can provide the best tender i know what trees are going to provide the best uh, uh, method of uh, making a comfortable bed so i sleep really well etc cetera, etc cetera, right so you can even go out and you can uh, join courses you know get yourself some professional training we have courses on the traditional camp crafters guild including uh, even roundtable discussions where we have question and answer from professionals so finding yourself those kind of avenues are really important and you know just as much as you learning from others you'll be willing to share too. share your personal stories or experiences of overcoming your initial challenges and growing as a winter camper over time. Hey, you wouldn't believe the ripple effect that you could have on others, whether it be in your local community, family, friends, young people, uh, you going out of your way to share your love of outdoor adventure, sharing your growth. And you may be embarrassed of your growth, but I promise you, everybody grows. Everybody starts from somewhere. You being willing to put yourself out there can have a significant impact on others so that the the community gets bigger, the wisdom and and everything gets better. And like I said before, just networking, getting together with other people and maybe starting a club and uh, uh, just working with each other and helping each other out is pretty important to our overall growth and development. Now, this, uh, this next week's episode on my YouTube channel because, you know, I do the podcast once a month, but the next episode of the YouTube channel is all about me helping you diagnose a Primus camping stove. Now, if you've got a stove very similar to the Primus, just about all the old backpacking stoves, they're all pretty similar overall, whether it's a kerosene stove or a white gas stove, there's some nuances here and there, but uh, I help you guys diagnose any problems that you may have. And we are actually going to have a very special guest coming up from stormy cromer that's going to be the next campfire chat with a a nice awesome professional uh monolithic uh individual who's in charge with him and his daughter of a an incredible company the stormy cromer hat company if you're not familiar with what stormy cromer is and just look it up on the internet they've got a very proud american history and for outdoor wear, it, you just can't beat it when it comes to, to winter wear. So uh, make sure to subscribe. Make sure to follow. Leave me a comment. You know, uh, please review if you're listening to this on your podcast. Um, you know, give me a, a like, thumbs up or thumbs down. If you don't like it, that's, that's okay too. I appreciate whatever feedback you can give. I really hope this episode has helped you maybe lay out some ideas, whether or not be for yourself, or maybe for somebody else that you are going to coach and you're going to help get outdoors and be more confident, but also be safe in the winter. (laughs) Nobody should have their first experience camping, hiking, backpacking, bushcrafting, or whatever in the winter. They really should do this during the the other seasons to prepare themselves. Winter is kind of like the ultimate challenge and you want to make sure to do it safely. 
Now, again, I want to personally invite you to our traditional Camp Crafters Guild. You can join for five days. There's there's no obligation. You can poke around. You can see all the resources. Talk to all the great people on there. Like I said, we got courses. We got roundtable discussions. And it's just an incredible group of people with a tremendous amount of experience and wisdom. And they are willing and waiting for you to come on uh, to network with and uh, to help everybody out. So give that a shot. The, the link is in the description box and in the show notes. And if you uh, don't know how to navigate that, then please go to www.honorableoutfitters.com. That's my website where we got lots of different things on there. I just try to uh, help you guys out as much as I can with as many resources as I can. But on uh, the top menu page, you can see join the traditional Camp Crafters Guild, a new movement. Join the traditional Camp Crafters Guild, a new movement. And we can't wait for to see you on there. All right. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Give a kiss and hug to your loved ones. And I will see you guys next time, hopefully, on the Guild. Take care. <laughs>